on? This is Andy coming to you again from my Daily Funk Club headquarters, and I just want to show you my new jazz bass. Of course, it's not a new jazz bass. It's a 1976 jazz bass that uh, I purchased for about 1600 bucks from bass broker Dave Fowler, and uh, I couldn't be more happy with this instrument. I absolutely love it. You know, I just feel kind of... Um, I feel lucky in this case because you know you never know what's good, what you're going to get with these old Fender basses, especially you know around the mid around the late seventies they they started getting kind of kind of um, bad, <laughs> and um, you know they made a lot of bad ones between seventy seven and eighty, and um, this was made in seventy six, so it was right on the right at that transition period. Um, and then the other thing is you just, you just never know what you're going to get, you know, with an old Fender. Um, my experience is if you find one that's beat up and it's all worn and it looks like it's been played a lot, that means it's one of the good ones. Because if it sucked, they wouldn't have played it. You know what I mean? The ones that are brand new looking, you know, those ones are the ones you got to watch out for because they probably suck. <laughs> and for sure, they haven't been played enough to be played in to you know the more the vibration goes through the the more the instrument is played the better it sounds that's how that's how an instrument mellows with age that's how that's what makes a great old fender be a great old fender is because it's been played a lot and because it's gotten mellow from um you know the vibration going through the instrument over a long period of time and naturally drying but uh, the playing part of it is 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 really really important so like a brand new um Fender bass that someone shoved in their closet with without a mark on it that's never been played. Um, you know, maybe that's something for a doctor or a lawyer to hang behind a glass case in their office, you know. Um, but that's not something for a player to use, you know what I mean? That's just a museum piece, you know what I mean? The ones that, the ones that uh, really, really kick ass are the ones that have been played a lot by somebody and, and hopefully owned by one person for a long, long time. This one, I... You know, we got through an estate situation, you know, it was owned by a bass player who Dave knew for many, many years and respected as a player. And, uh, you know, he owned this bass for a long, long, long time and played it a lot. And, uh, you know, it just has that um, that great kind of played in uh, personality to it. And, you know, in terms of the neck, it's got like laser low action and... Um, I didn't even do anything to it yet. You know, typically I would start screwing around with it and setting it up to my taste. But this one, it's like, a, you know, it's like a speed racer. stuff on this instrument you know blazing fast for me <laughs> and the action is just low all the way down the whole fretboard you know fret buzz, no ghost or phantom notes or, um, I mean, um, you know, wolf tones or anything like that. Got a great back pickup sound. So there's my little, um, you know, opinions on old Fender basses. For the longest time, I stayed away from them. You know, back in the day, back in the early 80s and mid 80s, I had several Fender basses, nice ones. You know, you could get a, you could get a 72 P bass for 500 bucks all day long. 
around 83, 84, 85. There were tons of them everywhere, and they were cheap. And they weren't called vintage basses, they were just called old basses, or, um, you know, used basses. And then, um, you know, somewhere around the early 80s, I, I, I went through a couple of late uh, 70s jazz basses and had a really bad experience with some three-bull jazz bass, uh, you know, purchases in the, in the, in the, in the uh, around 88, 89. And uh, I bought a Yamaha BB2000 at that time, and I said, you know, the hell with fenders, them things suck. This BB2000 kills it. And I played that for many, many years. And then I got a GNL, and then in 92 or 93, I got a GNL. L5500, which at the time we called the poor man Sadowski, <laughs> but it was an incredible bass. It still is. It's right over here. I still have it. I have, I played that bass for 16 years, and I didn't even have a, another bass. It was my only bass for 16 years, the, the black L5500 GNL from, that I got in 1993. Anyways, back to the Fenders. You know, I've been getting into them a little bit more lately, and I've just been lucky that Dave Fowler hooked me up with this one because it's a great one. And I really, really, really love it. And I'm going to keep it forever. There's no question about it. Absolutely, for sure, 100%, this one will be with me until I croak. Now, I just bought a P bass <clears throat> for $1,400 online, you know, from a dealer. I got a good hit off the dealer. You know, when you're buying these things, it's real important to get a good hit off the person you're, 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 you're purchasing it from. You know, try and communicate with them a little bit. And just see where the conversation is going because, um, you know, I've talked to a few people about her instruments and they just seem like a real prick, you know what I mean? And I was like, all right, screw you, I'm not buying nothing from you. And then I've talked to other people and they were really pretty helpful. And, um, you know, when you're buying these vintage instruments, there's a lot of questions, you know, um, in terms of their value and, and um, their condition and what's original on them and what's not original on them. And, Everything like that. You know, the P-Base that I bought from this guy, it's a 77. And um, it's blonde with a rosewood fingerboard, which is pretty rare for the late 70s. But, you know, you you want to you know, you be real careful. You know, you don't want the ones that are super, super heavy. The boat anchor 14-pounders. Those are junk. Um, you know, and then... If they say that it's all original, does that mean that it's not been refinished? Does that mean that the pickups, the pots, the pick guard, the bridge, the tuners, when they say all original, they mean it's all original? And, um, you know, that one that I just bought that's, that's on the way here, that one is all original. So we'll see, you know. We'll see if it's killer or not, you know. And uh, just once, one more shout out of thanks and appreciation to Dave Fowler at Bass Broker. Because, um, you know, he's a good guy. And he's always got real nice basses that he's, that he's selling. And, um, you know, I'm so happy that I bought this one. This one has made me so happy. It's one of my most uh, precious ones these days. You know, I have a lot. But um, this one's special, so thanks a lot, Dave. And uh, yeah, these old Fender basses can be just a, just like you know life changing instruments. You know that's why so many people play them. Um, they also can be uh, <laughs> sob stories, but um, you know I I don't know. I I think there's more good ones than there is bad ones. Let's just go with that. Um, you know, be careful in the, in the vintage market. It's escalated beyond reasonable, uh, you know, places in my opinion, but, um, you know, collecting fender bases or whatever, a lot of people collecting them. seems like there's more people out there in the vintage market that are collecting them than there, than, 
are actually playing them. And that's one of the things that annoys me about it. But there's some good ones out there, and you can get a good price on them if you go through the right dealer that, that knows what they're talking about that is also a bass player. And um, Dave Fowler is certainly one of them at Bass Broker, so check them out. All right, friends, peace.